What's up everybody, Art the Pirate here, and today I'm going to check out the Kalari changes and see how much they've really affected her. Now I am using the starter deck, and the cards are Call the Weak, Green Spring, Guard Piercer, which got a nerf, Vital Waters, which I really don't use, Swift Hunter, which is kind of a medium card, Thunder Cleaver, Numbing Rogue, and Vampiric Blade, which did kind of get that small little rework. Now, the gems, you know, they're all really vitality-based gems, which, in my opinion, really isn't the best for Kalari, but this is the starter deck, and I think I'm going to kind of start a series where... I just go in with starter decks for maybe people that haven't got enough cards to build a full deck and just see which decks are really good. Now I can say I've played a handful of the ADC starter decks and those videos will come out a little bit later but they're pretty solid and the Durango deck that I used today was actually the starter deck and it's a solid deck. It doesn't have a very strong end game like late end game but typically matches are only lasting about 30 minutes, so you might not even get that far in. Now I am in lane with a Narbash and a Seraph. You know, Drango's one of the best ADCs that we've seen in a while. I, you know, I don't want to go as far as to say OP. I have not had enough experience with him, but his kit is absolutely amazing. And I don't know, for some reason I have actually not even had to fight for him in most of the drafts that I've picked him on which is just kind of shocking you know I really like Durango or Drango and I'm not a big ADC fan I'm not a big ADC player but hey it is what it is and I'll be more than happy to take it. Now the nerfs Kalari received were Shadow Dance cooldown from 12, 10, 8, and 6 to 14, 13, 12, and 11, which that is kind of a substantial nerf, I would say, because that is kind of her main escape. Basic attack damage has been reduced by 3 from 59 to 56, basic attack damage per level is reduced from 4 to 3, attack speed per level has been reduced from 2.7 to 2.5, basic defense has been reduced from 25 to 20, basic damage per level has been, re or basic defense per level has been reduced from 3 to 2.6, and shadow walk mana cost has been increased from 50 to 60. Now, Kalari is one of my favorite heroes. I have not played her very much just because, you know, since the nerf way back in Legacy, she kind of didn't feel near as good as some of the other heroes. And then, you know, the beginning of Monolith with just the amount of vision and everything like that, she really hasn't felt like a solid hero. But now, you know, in version 42, I felt she was very overtuned and... You know, I know a lot of people out there are still kind of raging about Countess, but I felt Kalari was in a much more, you know, overtuned state than Countess is, which I do think Countess could handle a little tuning down. But, you know, hey, no big deal. Hopefully we'll get some better changes and some better balancing issues fixed in the future. But I believe Countess being a, or Kalari being able to one-shot someone out of the shadow plane is just unfair you know you countess if you can silence her with durango's new ability is amazing he's countess destroyer but if you're able to really you know kind of avoid her abilities or mainly her ultimate you can really shut her down kalari you can't it's all basic attack so Avoiding a basic attack is much more difficult than avoiding a, an ability that does have a cooldown. Now, one thing that I, I've always kind of been against is having a melee support as well as a melee ADC. And strictly the reason is the they can't really come into the tower. You know, the support staying back is kind of a big thing. 
because you know they just don't they're not able to damage that tower so you're relying on adc well if it's a melee adc they have to come into the tower and you know just as an example right there i'm able to do work on that seraph even though you know she's barely doing any damage to the tower at this point but i'm getting a good chunk of damage done to her now i don't really care about my tower at this point Kalari really needs to get fed to come online and you know that's really a big thing with her you know you have to get that farm so letting that tower fall is completely okay that way you can actually start getting some of that farm that's how come I wasn't too concerned about defending the tower I'm gonna go after the ADC and if I can get a if I can force her out of lane that's great and if I lose my tower in the process, hey, it's not a big deal. I'm going to slow farm it and really starve them from their gold. And that's just going to be a huge benefit to me. Now, Norvash is using wards, which, you know, that kind of hinders me. But at the same time, it's not really that big of a deal. I do get some rotation from our Greystone jungler, which we're able to pick up that support kill. I would have liked to have got that Seraph, but, you know, getting a kill regardless, she's going to have to stay under tower once he's gone because she cannot heal herself back up, and I'm currently doing a lot more damage than she's able to do. Now, our Greystone did get caught out a little bit, and I was not there to really help him out. I don't know if I even could have. I kind of wish that he... You know, I, I wish there would have been a little more communication, but I am unfortunately not in comms with him. So he did end up going down, and hey, that's not a big deal. You know, I, I like I said, I wish he would have survived, but the respawn times are so quick in this early game that he'll be back in lane just as fast as if he actually teleported to base, filled up in health, and then got back in the lane which I would actually hope to see that changed. I think the regen time in base is a little too long, and yeah, it's, you know, of course it's not worth it, but you don't want to feed the other team, but if they kill you, you're able to get back in lane faster than if you run, find a safe place, teleport, stand in base, fill up with mana or health, and then run back in lane. You're actually at these early stages you're able to get back a lot faster not just slightly faster and i would definitely like to see a you know adjustment with that now one thing about kalari is not everybody plays her off lane a lot of people like playing her in the jungle and she's a lot more viable than she used to be in the jungle just because the jungle is so much less damage than it used to be and i would definitely like to see more people playing her off lane. I feel that she does a great job in off lane. You know, once you get a Thunder Cleaver, she's actually able to wave clear pretty substantially with the amount of attack speed that version 42 has. And, you know, I'm still able to, you know, ult across the entire map and things like that. So I can support my team as well as, you know, I've got significant wave clear. I might not be on Wukong's level, but I'm very close. Now, me and Greystone end up going in on this Tier 1 tower, and, you know, he's starting to take a pretty substantial amount of damage. I would definitely like to see him get out. And once I knew the tower was going to fall, I'm going to go ahead and get out. I come back in just to make sure we end up getting it out, and I'm really not threatened by Seraph or Narbash right now. So... You know, I'm not too worried about being out of position. I'm going to kind of just make sure everything's going. They're not going to freeze the lane, which is very good for me. This is going to allow me to continue my farm as well as, you know, it will free me up to be able to rotate if I can push their lane, you know, closer to their tower. Now, I've been able to steal gold quite a bit so far. I believe I've got it all three or three times total, which is, you know, that, that's substantial. That's a lot of farm lost from their carry or their support. And if you know me, I really like seeing the support get gold just because if, 
you're leaving your farm to get the gold buff, you're actually going to end up losing points, but no big deal. Now Greystone continues to chase that Narbash. He was really too healthy for me to do anything with, and being out of mana, I'm not going to be able to help at all. So I'm just going to continue my farm, and then I've got 4,000 points to spend. I need to get 500 more points, and then I will be able to put on that Guard Piercer, which really is going to boost some damage. So I'm just going to kind of hang out, wait till I get my few more points, and then head back to base. Come back and actually do some damage to these, this support in this offlane, or this support in this carry. Now, once I get back in lane, I am able to pick up their gold buff again. Now, I don't know if this is everybody, but I am playing on PlayStation, and there's kind of a bug that's been going on. It's happened just nonstop, where I will put on a card, and as soon as I leave base, that card will go away, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. You know, half the time I don't notice it like I am right now. I have not noticed that card is missing which that's that's huge you know i'm i'm missing what is it 16 power and 18 pin after that buff which that's a that's a huge part of my kit that i'm missing and the bad thing is is i'm going in thinking i have that and yeah it's just a real inconvenient thing now i end up ulting that wukong to try to secure that kill but i end up hitting that Narbash instead, but luckily I am able to use that dagger and I end up grabbing that kill. Now I'm going to go ahead and back and actually put this card on, which like I said, it's, it's very irritating having to deal with that. Now Swift Hunter, in my opinion, does not offer near as much as Thunder Cleaver or the Guard Piercer. It does have attack speed, but it's got way less power and having that ability to, you know, that movement speed increase after killing a, uh, an enemy minion or just an enemy unit doesn't feel very strong and I really think that card needs a buff especially since it's a seven point cost card so maybe they could make it have just slightly more power or maybe even a more attack speed but right now I'm using that as a filler card and that's the first one to go I keep guard piercer on much more than that Swift Hunter. I just don't feel Swift Hunter has near the impact as this five point card does. Now one thing about Kalari is she's got that just insane ranged ultimate. So you always want to keep an eye out to see if you know someone's getting low or anything like that. Now I see there is a hero that's pretty low and I believe it's Countess in the off lane. So I'm gonna try to alter now i do see she's under her tower but hey that's not a big deal i'm gonna be able to get that kill and with my ability to you know go in viz and everything like that i should be safe enough to make that dive and secure that kill if she would have had her ultimate or been able to ult me it might have gone a different way but typically when you know, you're getting hit by this invisible assassin. You're not thinking straight and you're trying to run and hide or whatever. So that can kind of throw people off. And if she's that low on health, she's typically already used that ultimate or hasn't used it because it's on cooldown. But after I get that kill, I definitely have to head back to my lane and you can see why. I pretty much book it straight over here after picking up that river buff just because I know my lane's going to have a massive amount of minions. And while I don't care if this tower falls, I don't want to just give it away for free. I actually want their team to have to work to get this tower. Because if you just give that tower away for free, that allows two of their teammates to freely roam and kill your heroes or kill your teammates without having an effort. Now, by making them rotate to this lane, you are creating an opportunity for your team to push and things like that. So you definitely never want to give your tower away for free unless you're trading, you know, a tower for tower kind of thing. That might be worth it. 
but a kill for a tower, in my opinion, is never worth it. Now, I am able to push into this tier 2, and I take this tier 2 without any, you know, competition or any kind of resistance from the enemy team, which, you know, th this is kind of what I was talking about. They're allowing me to take this tower, which it isn't for free because I am here, but it's completely uncontested, and I went from having that massive minion wave to actually taking down a tower almost effortlessly, and that's, that's, that's a huge thing. Now, there Seraph does have the card where she can see me, and so staying in the shadow plane is almost pointless if she's chasing me, but I am not threatened by her at all. I've been stealing so much farm away from her that she's not going to be able to kill me, and even if she does close that distance and use her ultimate, with my kit, my ability to jump and go in viz, even though she can see me, it is disorienting for just a second. So I am not too threatened by her at all. Of course, late game, she probably will be able to destroy me if, you know, she starts hitting me first, but right now I'm not threatened. Now we do have a little bit of a team fight and I'm able to ult over and help secure a couple of these kills. I probably am going to lose my tower for this, but that is quite alright. It's not a free tower, and although it's uncontested at the moment, I'm going to head over there and get them, you know, push them back, but, you know, I, I believe I do end up losing this tower right here, and that's no big deal. You know, we got a couple of kills for a tower, and even though this Narbash is... You know, he's kind of farming. He's a support. You know, he's not threatening or anything like that. Now, he did jump over that dagger. And, you know, that's that's just depressing. And I chase him a little bit. I, you know, I should have just let him go. After this thunk, you know, hey, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch him. Especially being this low on mana. So, I'm definitely going to let him go. Now our Sparrow's farming my lane again, which is completely okay. I let the ADC get fed. I've been doing very well on my farm. I'm currently at 94 with five kills and four assists. You know, at 20 minutes as an offlaner, if you're at around 100 minion kills, I would say you're definitely doing pretty good. Especially, like I said, that five kills with zero deaths is just an absolute huge help. Now, they do have a rotation over here. I'm not particularly worried about Countess, but I am low on mana, and, you know, I just want to get out. Now, the wards, you used to be able to dagger them, and that would take them out, but I have not been able to do that yet, and I don't know if that's because my daggers weren't ranked high enough, or... You know, if I'm doing something wrong, I did try to basic attack that one, and it clearly did not work. So, you might need to get that dagger a little bit higher before you can actually take them out. But, I just have not been able to do that yet. Now, I end up ulting over to this Kalari, or this Chimera. He was in our off lane, or our safe lane, pushing it. And you can see here, I'm <laughs> just in the middle of this massive minion wave. And I'm able to do tons and tons of damage to him, even with his ability to, you know, his spirit regen. I was out damaging his regen. He ends up leaving the minion wave, which, if you are a Chimera player, leaving a minion wave, if you're in a fight, is a terrible idea. Because as long as you're in that minion wave, you are getting regen. If you're going to go down, you're not going to be able to run away you know, just how his kit is built. So it's best to go down fighting, at least clear out a handful of minions and go down, or you could get a kill because that spirit region's so high up. But when you leave that wave, your your whole kit revolves around that spirit re regeneration. And once it's gone, you know, you're just a very easy target to deal with. Now I'm able to push down this lane there is a Countess here, but like I said, I'm, I'm not too terribly threatened by Countess. I have 
had a couple of close calls with her, and she does have the Shadow Walker card, so she can see me being invisible. But one thing, my invisibility outlasts hers, and you know, I'm able to do a little bit of damage. Now, I do kind of bait her, and she comes out of the tower after me, but Seraph was right behind me, and I didn't realize that. And they make very short work of me, so there's my first death, and you know, it was really on me, but I am kind of being a little cocky, and you know, I'm able to head back and really put some more cards on. Now, they have quite a few heroes in mid lane, so I'm going to head over there, and Countess, she's been caught out. I'm able to down her. Now, I use my ultimate to secure that kill, even though it was right there. I just wanted to make sure I got that kill, and Chimera wasn't able to keep me from actually catching up to her with that slow you know i'm i might not be able to secure that kill and getting countess out of the picture is huge especially you know an assassin for an assassin that that's a crazy big thing and you know although kalari's main job is to deal with adcs and the squishier heroes if you can take out that threat like another kalari or another countess that's huge and, you know, wasting an ultimate or using an ultimate to make sure you get that secured is not that big of a deal. Now, Wukong was pushing up a little bit more. I missed my dagger, of course, but that wouldn't have killed him anyways. I get a handful of more damage on him, and that's really going to allow me to, you know, kind of get him out of that lane. Now, of course, Seraph and Narbash are in the jungle. I am pretty weak, and I'm out of mana. But our jungle Greystone heads in, and we're able to secure this Seraph kill, even though she's ulting us. You know, we're just putting out so much damage right now. And I cannot throw a dagger quite yet to get that slow. We have quite a bit of a team collapse right here, you know, close to their jungle. And we end up picking up another kill on their Countess, but I'm very low. I need to get out. You know, I do lazy back again, which I'm really bad about lazy backing. But with those two kills, I wasn't too concerned about being in their jungle. I am able to put Vampiric Blade on, which I still have not gotten used to activating this card. <laughs> but we're able to put that final build on, well, final-ish build on. And this is really kind of the, you know, max build that we can really get with this starter deck. I believe you could play around and get a little better build, but I feel this is kind of the highest damage output with that great sustain with Vampiric Blade. Now I'm currently pushing my off lane again, and I'm going to head over to try to see if their green buffs up, and I see Countess clearing out some jungle camps, and she heads over to the green. Now I was hoping to either steal the green or kill her before anything happened. Unfortunately I screw up on both. But Countess is able to juke me out with her invis and, you know, her shadow slip just kind of... I didn't notice she went invis. Now, I try to ult her and, you know, she is able to shadow slip my damage from my ult, I'm guessing, there. And we have a little bit of a team rotation. Seraph's here, so, you know, they've got vision on me. And I dip in through that fog wall and then dip right back out so she's run around the jungle looking for me right now and you know i'm clearly on, on the other side of the fog wall so we got a successful juke on her i'm gonna head over pick up that river buff to fill up on some mana and see if i can make another play now just a few minutes later i get my second death now i am you know, I'm seen in the shadow plane because of this Seraph here. Now, I misclick, or, you know, miss pushed, whatever you want to call it with the controller. And I end up taking myself out of the shadow plane. I was waiting for that ultimate. I was just kind of running around hoping that ultimate would get off a cooldown. Then I could just ult across the map. But, unfortunately, that misclick cost me my life. They could still see me, but like I said... When you are that shadowy purple, it is kind of disorienting. Now, our Greystone did end up picking up Prime, and this is kind of another one of those things that I'm just really not cool with. You know, now that they've allowed so many other heroes to solo Prime, anybody that, you know, 
feels like, hey, I'm going to solo a Prime, just go for it. You know, they do, and you see, we lost an inhib while he was soloing Prime. And we've got three heroes down while he soloed Prime. So only two of our heroes even got Prime activated. And our lanes are pushing against us. You know, mid lanes need some adjustment. It was just a very poor time to go for Prime. And you can't stop people from going for Prime. You know, you can ping retreat, but if they don't want to listen, they're not going to. And I, I just kind of see that as an issue. I really wish Prime was a team effort. That way, you know, you're not getting these, hey, I got Prime all of a sudden, you know, surprises. Now, we did end up taking out two of their inhibs with that, uh, our Greystone, our Wukong, our Quang, and, you know, once our Sparrow and everybody spawn back in, we're able to take out those inhibs, but, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, view other people playing from a death screen, it's just really not enjoyable. But they ended up doing that, and we're actually going to go in here on this third inhib. Now, Wukong is challenging us, which, you know, he did get a substantial nerf. I have not played with him yet, but with that nerf, I just kind of don't really see him being able to do near as much as he used to. Now, I have definitely felt the repercussions of that increased mana cost you know Kalari is pretty mana hungry it seems which I haven't played with her in a while maybe she's always she's been that way for a while and I just haven't noticed but you know I use that ultimate thinking hey I'm gonna ult and throw a dagger he'll be dead and you know I use so much mana that <laughs> dagger wasn't able to do it now we head over we're we should be able to clean all this up with me and Quang Greystone ends up going down and I did not realize, but Quang actually takes off. And, you know, I, I think if he was there, we would have been able to get that. And, you know, you see, I forget to use my Vampiric Blade. You know, it's, it's very strange. I'm like, okay, I know I have this card. I want this lifesteal. You know, I just think it's magically going to happen. I'm just not used to activating lifesteal. You know, it's I have not played a whole lot of ADC or you know in Kalari's case I have not played with Vampiric Blade enough to remember hey you need to activate it but you know no big deal we did end up getting four down but we've got all of our lanes pushed with all their inhibs down and we're still going to come out with a win on this it's just going to take us a little longer so I am using the starter deck like I said and I really don't feel the changes with Kalari I do notice the mana a little bit but, you know, she's not just super mana hungry, and I am not using that crazy power deck, so it might actually change if I do have that crazy power deck. I might not be able to one-shot, but I can honestly say I don't feel that much of a, you know, I'm not dying faster, really. I'm still outputting just tons and tons of damage, so... I don't think it was quite enough balancing, but, you know, I definitely want to get into that super in-game build and see how it plays as well. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, show me some love, leave me a comment, think about subscribing, and as always, I'll see y'all in the next video.